Assalamualaikum and good day I be to all of you. My name is Muhammad Amirun Hazi bin Muhammad Fazli A18 CS0109. As stated before from my friend, we agree on technology changing people better based on the definitions given. There are three main points that I will elaborate more in this video. All these points will revolve around the national different aspect or usage of all aspects of technology for defending ourselves. I will start my point for a big picture before reducing it into smaller aspects to get a clearer picture on how technology helps humans using weapons as a defense tool. First of all, I would like to talk about a huge usage of weapons. The example that I will use are wars. War can be defined as a battle that claims more than 1,000 lives. For starters, war should gradually decline from the past. Yes, I agree that war can be destructive and have a bad ending as a result. But we, as a people, we tend to learn from mistakes when better changes are continuing. As a result, even though technological advances so fast, the number of wars nowadays, if being compared to past, will show a significant decline. As quoted in our world of data, the number of violent deaths per 100,000 per year recorded highest in 1840, which is associated with Cato and California with the record of 1,450. The number declines since then. If we only look at the modern era, we can see Japan in 1900 and 1950 recorded 30 in 20th century world war with 6, a war around 2007 and above with 0 0.33. The decline of war has led to a better world. This change has changed the world to become more prosperous, less dead and for overall better lifestyle. The second point will explain more detail on how technological advances help a nation to become more prepared. The point is we are not living in a utopian world. Everyone wants to live in peace but not all have a good personality. What I'm trying to say is what technology can pose a real threat for security, it also gives insurance for the nation. If they have good technological advance, other nations may be afraid to attack them to prevent loss and having uncertain results. Sometimes skepticism may be needed to ensure our safety. This will give assurance to the citizens that they are safe from external factors. Since not all nations can afford military advances, they also can use technology to improve in other aspects. Some improve in technological services, some improve in technological studies, some improve in government policies, and many other aspects. The globalization has led the world to become dependent on each other. The attack on another nation will cause other countries to condemn and make cut off ties to them. This will surely be harm to the nation on economical, economical affairs and reputational aspects. Surely, every nation doesn't want that. The last point is the threat to domestic violence. While guns and knives may be harm to the countries, guns and knives in a good hand will bring peace to the countries. Using New Zealand as an example, it has less laws regarding gun ownership. We can see that one for every four people in New Zealand possess firearm. But if we look at the statistic, we can see only 0.11 cases of homicide and 0.84 cases of genocide for 100,000 population per year were in Venezuela. They have straight law, you can see 26.48 cases of homicide are recorded, also compared to the same figures. So, the usage of guns and other technological advances is needed for the authority to prevent such cases from happening. Technological advances such as cars, GPS, and tasers also help authorities to break down, pinpoint the criminal's location, and catch the criminals without killing them, respectively. 
so we can conclude the technology can bring good if good people have the authority of it it may have some bad reputation but its benefits outweigh the harm of it and that's all from me Muhammad Mazik